Welcome to Hope Talks, where we share inspiring stories of hope in Jesus Christ. Hope Talks is hosted by Pastor Margaret Michael and Grayson Willis. Join us for uplifting stories of triumph, faith, and the enduring power of Christ's love. Also, if you're in the listening area, tune into 1470 AM or 102.1 FM WBTX to listen to Hope Talks every Sunday at noon. Welcome to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. I'm Grayson Willis. And I'm Pastor Margaret Michael. Thanks for tuning in, and today we're joined by Renee Reed. Renee, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. And Renee is here to share her testimony, but Renee, just start out telling us a little bit about where you're from and about how you grew up. I am from Baker, Lost River, West Virginia, so it's about an hour away from here in West Virginia, and I grew up in a Christian home and um, went to church on a regular basis, was um, saved and baptized in the river when I was about 12, (laughs) and tried to do my best to follow Jesus, but God was like a big guy in the sky at that point in time for me, you know, um, when you're young and that kind of thing. I got married young, and I had three children. And when I was about 27, my husband at the time left when I had a little baby mm. and felt like the rug of my life was pulled out from under me when I had no idea. And uh, he was seeing someone else. And um, so I had a five-year-old, a four-year-old, an infant, newborn infant, a couple weeks old. And um when that rug got pulled out from under me, all you have left is Jesus. Mm. And yeah. my relationship with God got real personal mm. with God at that point in time and just clung to him in every way. Like, you know, trying to be a mom and know what to do and how to do it. And it was, you know, it was a hard, hard time, hard years. And, um, but I had a really good church family and a lot of people that surrounded me and took care of me and helped me parent. <laughs> um, and got the word poured into me at a really good church and really good teaching and good Bible study. My kids were in Christian school at that time, so the word was being poured into them um, during that time in my life. And um, I was in Morgantown, West Virginia, during that time. and. One day the Lord said, move. (laughs) I said, oh no, (laughs) I just built a house and um, the kids were young, but it was time I came home to where my family lives. So I had moved away. I had lived in Huntington, got a nursing degree, um, was in Morgantown, um, taking care of my family. My kids were going to Christian school and um, God said, move home to your family. And at that point in time, I was working on a master's degree in teaching because being a nurse is really, really hard with young kids and your schedule. Um, Very, very difficult. So I started working on my master's in teaching from Liberty. Um, I was working at the school where the kids were at. I moved home and um, bought a house here and um, tried to you know, just figure out my way. (laughs) My kids started a new school and God gave me a job in the midst of that. And I bought that house without a job, a lot of faith (laughs) (laughs) during those, those times. Um, and I met somewhere in the midst of volleyball, um, met my husband was, or is my husband. I don't know how do you say that? Someone that you've lost. Yeah. Yeah is you know still part of you I met him at in Charleston during a volleyball event and we talked and became quick friends and um, we just we dated for about a year and a half and got married he moved away or move we moved I mean we knew what we were doing and talked about it we knew we were probably going to get married and um he moved to Parkersburg, West Virginia, so I'm living in Lost River, and he we bought, well, he was renting at the time in Parkersburg because he took a job, so he took a job far away, and we traveled long distance. Mm, that is a long distance relationship. <laughs> it was about four hours, yes. so we talked every day on FaceTime, mm-hmm. 
and he drove most weekends, but we saw each other almost every weekend of the month. And because I was a teacher and teaching middle school science at the time, because I was a teacher, you know, holidays, we were together Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, summers we were together and, um, I had three kids and they were busy. We had, we did lots of sports and back and forth. And so he, we would go to games and, you know, we went on vacation and we did all the things we had. It was, I mean, I don't know how you say that it's hard when you're apart, yeah. but, uh, yeah. um, we had a really good relationship and a great marriage. I had not experienced that in my first marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that my first marriage was very difficult and he was not a believer, wouldn't go to church with mm-hmm. the kids and I, and now we went to church every Sunday and, we went to Walmart and got groceries and went to eat, yeah. <laughs> and then he drove back to Parkersburg, uh-huh. and you know I drive back home, and we'd spend another week apart, and um, we communicated well every day. And then I guess my son graduated high school, and he was the last one, so we were finally empty nesters. I didn't have any reason to stay in Hardy County. Couldn't afford to stay in Hardy County for us to be separate any longer. And I moved to Parkersburg, West Virginia. Um, It was June of 2022. Seems like a lifetime ago. (laughs) Moved to Parkersburg, West Virginia. Away from my family who, you know, had been here about 12 years. And we had had a house, we bought a house there somewhere in the middle of that. And so we had a house and got rid of, you accumulate lots of stuff. Yeah, for <laughs> so, sure. <laughs> got rid of all the stuff, moved to Parkersburg, new empty nesters. We're just kind of getting started and trying to get our finances in order. I started a new job, had pretty, pretty good people around me in my job, started a new job. And it was a hard job. I had 157th graders that I taught in science every single day. Mm. There was a lot of crying on those days. You know, it was just hard. I can't even imagine. And we were, you know, some of the kids were rural kids and some of them were more urban kids. It was kind of a mix. A lot of challenging behaviors, a lot of challenging times in those in those classrooms. Um, so that was in August. We had a wonderful Christmas because we finally didn't have the expense of two houses. Yeah. <laughs> we had a really good Christmas with all of our kids. And um, January 11th, 2023, um, my husband went to um, Planet Fitness to work out, if that tells you anything. And he'd had some health things off and on. Um, he'd had a previous heart attack that he survived from. Um, he actually went into cardiac arrest and that was a couple years after we were married and, but had a stent place. So he had had some ups and downs and, you know, trusted God faithfully in his health issues, but he'd been fine and doing all the things, going to doctor's appointments and taking his medication and taking good care of himself. He exercised. I tried to cook and he, (laughs) we ate well, you know, good for us, not just sugar. (laughs) We didn't just eat all the good stuff. We, we did go to sweet frog really often. We both liked sweet frog really well. He thought that was pretty good for you at that point in time. (laughs) So January 11th, 2023, he's going from planet fitness and he got lottery tickets once a week and it was a Wednesday and he was getting lottery tickets and he went to grab the go mark door and grabbed his chest and he fell forward and he died. And um, I was at church. I was in a Bible study Mm. at church. It was one of the rare evenings that we were in different places. We often went to Planet Fitness together. And I had a friend who her husband um, was just getting home from Cleveland Clinic. He'd been sick. And I made him a meal and took the meal that evening Mm. and um, made Greg, since my husband's name, made him fish tacos. Mm. And they were sitting on the, the stove on the counter, and I sent him a message, honey, your dinner's on the, when you get home from, when you get home from working out, your dinner's on the, the stove. And I had talked to him, seen him briefly right before he went to um, work out in passing. I was coming home, and he was leaving. So I was in church, and I started getting phone calls. 
And I knew something wasn't right because he always communicated with me and I was trying to find his location on my phone at the time, but he didn't want your phone to go off in church. And yeah. I had my silence on and the first phone call I didn't answer it because you don't, yeah. I mean, you know, uh-huh. you don't know who's calling. We get spam right. calls all the time, right? Yeah. Uh, the second phone call, I'm like, something's not right. I got to answer the phone call. I don't remember who I talked. I think it was maybe the emergency room that I talked to first. Mrs. Reed, we've been trying to reach you. We need you to come to the to the hospital. As soon as I hung up the phone, I got another phone call. It was from a sheriff's office. They were trying to get a hold of me. Didn't even know how to get to the hospital. I hadn't lived in Parkersburg but six months. This was a new place for me. So, um... I walked back into the sanctuary and told my pastor who we'd only been going to, we had went to a church. I was at um, South Parkersburg Baptist Church. Um, we had been going to church there off and on every time we were in Parkersburg. But then since we had lived there, you know, we were going, you know, almost weekly to church. And I had started a um, Bible study. And um, so I had met the pastors, but I really hadn't met many other people. And Greg knew them from past things. He was into sports, so he knew a lot of people around the state of West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Most anybody that had to know, do with sports, Greg knew them, which included the pastors at South Parker's Road Baptist <laughs> Church. <laughs> they what were was wonderful. His job? He was um, at the assistant executive director of the West Virginia Schools Activities okay. Commission. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's where their office is in Parkersburg. Mm-hmm. So I walked back into the sanctuary that night, and I knew something was really wrong. Um, I even asked the guy in the emergency room, did my husband die? And they couldn't tell me. But you know, you yeah. have a gut. Yeah. You know, you have a gut. But um, when I look back, you know, God had me there, mm-hmm. um, had me in church. I was taking notes in my Bible just like I did today. Mm-hmm. I'd go back and look at those notes in, the, in my Bible. I walked in the sanctuary and told Pastor Rich, I said, you need to come check on me. I'm not sure what's wrong, but I'm going to need you. And Pastor Adam, the other pastor, kind of intercepted me. And he said, what do you need? I said, I don't even know how to get to the hospital. He said, follow me. You know, so you know it's mm-hmm. not good when they walk you into the, <laughs> the room and, you know, you don't get to see your loved one. Mm-hmm. You see a chaplain. Mm-hmm. And Pastor, I didn't have anybody in Parkersburg, none my family or anyone. So Greg just died. I, I don't really know what happened. Um, I think he was probably gone in that moment, you know, from the time that he collapsed. Mm-hmm. It was a hard days. Mm-hmm. My pastor and his wife switched out the other pastor, and they took care of me that night until my mom and dad drove four hours to get there in the middle of the night. We did organ donation. Um, all the kids showed up, you know. You do all the things, yeah. but you're numb. You're going through, there's, when that happens, it sets like a time clock of these things need to happen. Mm-hmm. And you just find yourself going through the motions. You do, but God intervenes in those motions. Yeah. You know, he woke me up. Yeah. I don't remember what day in the timeline, but it was like 5 a.m., not that I was sleeping much. (laughs) You need to write the obituary. I hadn't even thought about it. I I hadn't thought about it, you know, and he gave me words to put on paper to write the obituary. You know, you pick out the clothes, you do all the things, you go through all the motions, but grief takes up a lot of space in your life. Can't do anything else for a long time. Right. I couldn't go to work. I was off work for about a month. It was really, really, really hard. But God's in those moments. Yeah. I don't remember praying, but I was still reading the Word every day. He, um, that time that I moved to Parkersburg, I had time for more quiet time. So, you know, God had filled me. I was in a really good spiritual place where I'd spent a lot of time in the word, spent a lot of time in prayer. You know, we had, I had praise and worship music all it. Greg loved praise and worship music. Mm -hmm. You know, we had music on a lot. We, you know, 
Um, so, yeah, I still knew God was there. I still knew he was in those hard places. But you're, you know, what I don't think people, especially when you lose a spouse, and every loss is different for every person. You know, I've learned that. Every, it's a loss. And we have lots of losses, whether it's death or, I mean, you you grieve. Mm -hmm. You grieve. Grieving is hard. You don't know what to do. Right. You Uh, know. You don't know how to, what to be or how to be and... Um, I really, and you often, even when you're in ministry, I'm sure you don't sure what to do, but you know, the person, my friend that showed up with groceries, she didn't ask if I needed groceries. She just showed up on the door. You would have told her you didn't need them. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You know, my people, my work, they showed up the next day and brought food at the, Uh my principal that showed up at the door, sit here. You know, Greg's work here, you know, and just, you know, did it. And don't expect people that's grieving to respond. I don't remember what I did or what I said or how I responded to those people. But boy, was I thankful, Mm -hmm. you know, and it was the Presence matters, right? It does. Yeah. We, you know, so often I'll hear people say, are you going to the funeral? Going, I just I don't know what to say. Well, that's the cool thing. You don't need to Mm-mm. say anything. It's just it's a showing up that matters. Yeah. I don't think I was good at that before this. Mm-hmm. I was always that little bit of fear. I'm not sure what to do. If I should go to the house, if I should, yeah, but show up, yeah, because it makes a difference. Yeah, send the card. Yeah. yeah, send the flowers. They show up on the right yeah. day. Send don't again. They They'd absolutely do. Even if it's three or four months later, it's the right, it's the right day. Yeah. You know? And I think it's okay to say, I don't know what to say, but I'm here. We talk about being present. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I mean, anything, a phone call, the text, even if that person doesn't respond, don't be offended because you don't know where they're at. Oh, yeah. And like I said, and your capacity to do things to be present. I couldn't go to Bible study for a while. I mean, it was, I went to church. It was hard. Ooh. Greg and I always were in church together. We held hands, like so present with one another in church, mm. talked about the sermons. And, you know, church is still hard some days, mm. depending on yeah. the song and, you know, what's said. And, you know, but you, you do what you can. And that's, yeah. It's it's hard to, to just keep going, and you just keep going. You keep making decisions. You work through one thing at a time. You make the list. You might get one thing done. You do one thing the next day, <laughs> one thing the next day. I still have things I haven't gotten done. Yeah. And there really are stages of grief. Mm-hmm. You know, there's and you can't really skip any of the stages. It's a journey. Mm-hmm. It's not a quick journey. Um, not necessarily in any order and everyone right. is different you know someone that um I talked to this morning that lost someone you know recently um you I don't know it is it's it's just so different she said and my other friends that have experienced this said I started grieving on the day of the diagnosis you know the day that Mm. You know, you find out and you know that, and that person experiences grief so much different than sudden loss. Yes. One of my resources, and I have this book in front of me, it's by Clarissa Mole, Beyond the Darkness. I haven't read it all yet. I'm just at the beginning of it, but she also has some podcasts that are super, super helpful, but her husband died suddenly in a hiking accident. Mm. She had young children, but sudden death grief looks different than you know someone that experiences a diagnosis it's all different every person and there's no right or wrong way or right or wrong order (laughs) that's right (laughs) you know yeah I think about the I've not experienced the spouse but just with my dad like there were so many days as a caregiver that he was ready to go home and I grieved that I grieved him going home you know um I knew where he wanted to be, where he desired Mm -hmm. to be. And Mm -hmm. so in that process, there had been a lot of grieving by the the day he passed. I had already Mm -hmm. grieved that. And it's a father. It's not 
a spouse. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I get that. It's mm -hmm. different. Um, mm -hmm. The different relationships. And, it is. And I'm not married, and I've never lost a parent, but I remember losing both of my grandfathers, and it was very different because when my mom's dad died, it was... I don't know where his soul is, so to speak. So I was sad because, you know, when my dad's dad died, he had been suffering with cancer. So it wasn't as sudden, so to speak. But I it was kind of bittersweet because I knew he was with Jesus. And I knew he wasn't mm -hmm. suffering anymore. And even though it was hard for us to lose him, knowing that he wasn't suffering anymore made it easier. And so it's different, I think, when you lose different people depending on the relationship or like with you, with your husband, that was unexpected. Yeah. That I would think would be harder than somebody who you had time to prepare, mm -hmm. like if they were sick and you knew yeah. that. Yeah. I did some scripture. I think a good scripture to live in that you go back to and go back to regardless of who you're grieving, what you're grieving is Psalm 23. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, whether you're, I, um, I didn't share all my vocational background, but currently teaching um, high school science, which I didn't finish all the story of where I'm at, how I got here from Parkersburg. But um, I have um, experience because I, my bachelor's degree is in nursing. So I did tell you that. But I was a hospice nurse mm -hmm. for a period of time, about a year and a half. And, um, you know, every, there was most places and times, whether it's before a loved one passes or after in the grieving process, you know, or when you don't know what to say, when you don't know what to read, go back to Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, that comfort that we get in that or the hope and the hope we get in that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, is, what stands there. out to you? What's the, when you look at Psalm 23, what's what's the, the scripture that you would say, um, really, what verse? Is there any in particular? I think it's that phrase, that valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. I will fear no evil. And so, in the midst, there's lots of things that they might not be evil per se, right? <laughs> but he leads us beside still waters, uh, green pastures, that vivid imagery of creation and life that Jesus just walks us through. Uh, you know, that goodness of God that we see in that. Uh, in the midst of the valley. Yeah. You know. And that he walks us through it. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's peaceful. Yeah. You have a picture of peace there. Yeah. Even in that. And it's a long valley. Right. He <laughs> walks us through it. But yeah. it's, you know, he, he doesn't leave us in the midst of it. That is so comforting to know that on those darkest days in the darkest valleys that he is with us. Um, and I think it's important, I think a lot of, and one of the things Clarissa says um, in the, one of the myths is that there's an end to grief. Mm. And there's not, mm -hmm. there's not an end to mm -hmm. grief. It's your, and she talks about it's your companion. You learn to walk and thrive and, and live with that that's not mean you're sad all the time. That doesn't mean, right. you know, that you're down in the dumps and that you're not living, but it still goes with you. And we were talking mm -hmm. right at the beginning, you're talk, you know, that this expression of your love. Right. And I think I remember, actually, I think it's not holding on to loss, it's holding on to love. Mm -hmm. I think that was what I had, that grief is holding on to love, not holding on to and loss. And I think I've heard and seen, you know, you see and hear so many things, <laughs> you know, that... The harder you love, the deeper that love is. And that there was hard. a chaplain that said that. The, the deeper the grief, um, it's just an indicative of mm -hmm. the deep love that was shared. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I feel like you should hear the rest of the story, like how I got back to here. Yeah, yeah let's, let's hear it. Let's yeah, hear yeah, the rest let's of hear the story. It. We're part of it anyway. Yeah. Um, 
so Greg died in January. I was off work. And then when I went back to work, I was numb. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard. (laughs) You know, Uh, the kids were, you know, they tried to be nice (laughs) as much as seventh graders can be. That's a hard time in life. Um, And uh, I leaned on wisdom from others. And they say, you know, you shouldn't make big decisions within a year of. Yeah. You know, having lost someone, having, you know, such a big change. Because everything changes. Everything about your life, you're completely attached to that person. Mm -hmm. You're no longer attached to the job. And legally, the moment they died, you're legally separated from that person. That was so hard for me Mm -hmm. to realize that, what do you mean? You know, and it, it is... You know, any money you receive after that goes to the estate. It's not yours. It's mm-hmm. like they weren't your spouse legally. You know, so that all, that was, that's hard. And those laws differ a little bit from West Virginia to Virginia. I don't know of all Virginias, you know, all the things, you know, in Virginia. But um, I needed to make some hard decisions because and there was a little bit of life insurance, but not much. Greg didn't have a will. Um, it wasn't something we talked about it. We talked about the things and what he wanted and, you know, you just have those conversations, but we hadn't planned. We didn't, had not done any planning. Um, so beneficiaries were wrong. Um, things that hadn't got changed. Um, you know, we've been married six and a half years when he passed Mm -hmm. away and, um, it was good. Every day was so good. (laughs) Um, but it was, you know, it was, life was going to be really hard and I didn't know if I could make it on my teacher's salary by mm-hmm. myself um, to make our house payment and to make our bills, just the real practical mm-hmm. things. And I didn't know many people there. I'd only been there six months, you know, when he passed away. I had friends and I had, my church was amazing during all this time, like, um, show up and be amazing <laughs> because <Yeah>. that's important. <laughs> um, but, you know, in conversations with my brother And, um, I'm like, what do I do? And just decided to move, just take a leap of faith. I applied for a job that I thought I was licensed for, but I wasn't. And God helped me pass my chemistry praxis. That was a move of God. (laughs) And, um, I moved and back to Hardy County from Parkersburg and got a job at East Hardy High School. So I teach high school science, which is new. Um, I like being able to speak into high schoolers' lives. I was ready for a break for middle yeah. schoolers, <laughs> though I love them so in my time there. Yeah. So um, I moved into my parents' basement. Like, that's hard to do when you're, you know, in your late 40s. <laughs> yeah. oh. I'm currently still there. I, I mean, it helped financially being able to. So I really felt, or I heard the Lord say very clearly that I was to come to church with my brother and my sister-in-law and my niece and nephew when, um, back last July. So mm-hmm. it was probably August that you met me mm-hmm. for the first time, Pastor Margaret. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, who is your brother, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to go. Um, he's not going to be go unmentioned. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my, your awesome sister-in-law. Too. Yeah. <laughs> My brother is Chad Branson. Regardless of what we look like, I am the older sister. <laughs> he's about you look much younger. He's exactly a foot uh, <laughs> taller than I am. <laughs> but people that have met us in separate places say we look a lot alike. You do look so much alike. There's no denying. Um, yeah. So I've um, they have surrounded me, and I've mm-hmm. sat with them. Um, I am driving an hour, so I don't know a lot of other people, but I, uh, you know, come to church and spend time with them every Sunday mm-hmm. and have been poured into here through mm-hmm. sermons from lots of different pastors mm-hmm. and yeah. awesome praise and worship, which my husband would have loved. He loved praise and worship. Mm-hmm. I listened to his playlist this morning, mm-hmm. his worship playlist, because I knew I was doing this today and yeah. I was like, yeah, listening to Greg's playlist. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast of Hope Talks. You've been listening to part one of Renee Reed's testimony, and we pray that you'll join us for part two next Sunday right here 
1470 AM and 102.1 FM WBTX for part two of Renee's testimony. May God bless. Hope Talks is sponsored by Church of the Nazarene in Harrisonburg in partnership with Sunshine Ministries. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on Spotify or Apple Podcast. Your feedback helps us spread hope to even more listeners. Stay tuned for more uplifting stories in the next episode. Until then, keep the faith, share the love, and find joy in the hope that Jesus Christ brings.